Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Dude. I love that. I'm Liv. And this is part two of the PLL because you all know I really cannot say pretty little liars together. <laughs> it's like, um, but I am really excited because we're talking about Allison. We're going to kick off the episode with that. And then we're going to go into Ezra, Mona, Toby. There's still somebody that I'm forgetting. I'm filming this on the same day as the last one. And now I'm like, dang it, Bob, who am I forgetting? It's fine. We'll, we'll figure it out on the way. There's already a lot to talk about with just these, but oh, I forgot. This is also going to be the same type of episode that I did before. So it's going to be like us sitting down, having coffee, doing like a typing session, which is going to be so fun because if you coach with me, like this is kind of what we do, right? We like go back and forth. We figure it out whatever. So it's going to be tons of fun starting with Allison. This girl. Oh, I love Sasha Patirsa. I hope I'm saying her last name right. I tried to get it for years. Oh, fun fact. <laughs> this is like exposing myself, but I don't care. I was driving to school one morning. Okay. Twitter was popping. It was like 2009 and PLL was like the biggest thing. And I tweeted something to Sasha and she like replied back to me and I almost lost my mind. I was freaking out. I mean, my middle school self was like crying. Anyways, so don't like Allison. Lots to unpack here. I feel like we see very different sides of her. Not even I feel like, this is just a fact. We see very different sides of her in the beginning of the series when it's all just flashbacks to when she actually comes back to Rosewood. And hopefully I'm not spoiling that for anybody. Hopefully you've seen the entire series and you know that she comes back around and she's not dead. And so I, I, it, I almost feel like we have to give her two types and, and work through that because it's so drastic. So to me, if we're looking at just the flashback scenes and how she was when she was younger, definitely was able to shape shift was pretty much able to manipulate her way out of anything and into anything. Uh, she was able to, I, I'm thinking of the scene. I don't know which season it's in. I kind of want to say season three. It's when they're kind of looking at the whole situation of the girl that fell down the stairs, which we end up finding out is Noel Khan's fault because he's nuts. So they go to that college party and the girl falls down the stairs and the cops are there. And so they're like, oh crap, we're going to get busted because we're underage. And Allison walks right up to the cop and starts like schmoozing. And I'm like, no way. I would not have the guts. Can you imagine? So there's that. And I'm thinking about that and I'm like, ooh, that's interesting. Okay. Okay. So I'm going back and forth. There's three types that I feel like she probably is. Not probably. Three types that I feel like she really only could be. And that is a type three, a type two, which might be the unexpected one, and a type eight. Now, if you listen to the previous episode, I typed Spencer as an eight. However, she's probably like a self-preserving eight, whereas Allison is probably, if she is an eight, she's going to be like a sexual eight or a one-to-one. -one. They go either way. Um, also, I don't know if I even said this, but self-preserving, one-to-one, sexual, whatever you want to call it, and social are all subtypes. So each type has the three subtypes. And basically it's just uh, defining how each type looks different depending on the subtype. So I go really in depth with that whole thing in the Outer Banks episode, which I mention all the time. But if you're new, hopefully that helps because I was able to really like dig deep with that one. And it was, it was an interesting, it, blah, blah, blah. my tongue's tripping over me or I'm tripping over my tongue. Something's wrong. Anyways, that was an interesting episode. So check that one out. But the sexual or one-to-one -one eight is the most abrasive of the eights. So they're like the most intense. They're going to be the most provocative and the self-preserving eight, which I would say Spencer probably is, if not a social eight, she could be social. The self-preserving eight is just sort of more like blunt, moving ahead, like focused, um, strong opinions, things like that, which totally makes sense, right? For Spencer being in politics, hundred percent. But Allison's very, obviously like she's got some serious issues. I just want to preface that. So if your type is something that I've said about 
Allison, like if you're a two, a three or an eight, please don't be offended. All the types are amazing. All of them are needed in society. However, when we're not healthy, when there's trauma, when there's things like that, um, especially with Allison, it, there was some crazy stuff that happened. So I want to preface that if I'm saying anything that doesn't sound the most flattering, it's because of that she's acting out of, um, hurt and trauma and a desire to control. So no one's going to look good when they're, when they're that bad off and they're like obsessed with lying. I mean, that's already like a problem right there, but when twos go into a really low level of health, like I'm talking, I think there's eight or nine levels on the Enneagram Institute website. Sorry, my ankle just cracked. Um, you can check that out there. It's so helpful for identifying types. But if we're looking at it like that, the two in the really low levels can become extremely manipulative. And the two's passion is pride. And so that's where I kind of get that idea of like her walking up to that cop and just being like, he's not going to figure anything out. Like, I'm going to get ahead of the situation and I'm going to show him what's up, which definitely feels very eight-ish and very three-ish if we're being honest. And so that's, what's interesting to me. She, okay. If we're going to talk tri-type, this is interesting. If we're talking tri-type, I think she definitely has a three in there somewhere and she definitely has an eight. So from the gut triad, she's definitely got an eight from the feelings or the heart triad. She's definitely got a three. The head triad does trip me up though. Probably a seven because I don't see her being much of anything else. She's very focused on like having fun. She doesn't want to be bored. Even if she felt like her friends were getting boring, like if something they were doing while hanging out was boring, she's like, bye, I'm going to go do something more fun. So there's that whole thing. She's pretty low on loyalty. She'll, she'll kind of like move to whoever works at the time. Feels very much like if you listened to the episode uh, that I did typing the characters from the hundred feels very similar to Murphy in a way, but yeah, I, because of the drastic change that happens between the beginning of the series and the end, I feel like I don't have a firm handle on her type, but she becomes very serene and giving and caring in the five-year jump. So part of me thinks, is she a three? Is she a two? Because remember twos in stress go to an eight. So it's like, could we be getting some of that eightness when she is in a stressful situation, like about to be busted by the cops or trying to get her needs met? And so she's She's using other people and, and doing that like low level health to manipulation that could come across as eight-ish. Is she coming from a place of that three who wants to be perceived as a leader, who wants to be perceived as successful and the most beautiful and the most popular, which of course is like this very high school mindset, which makes sense. I mean, they're in high school, but it's, it's like this very um, eat or be eaten kind of thing that she's created in her head which I don't think was the actual situation, but in her mind, that's what it was. And so she's acting out of that, um, which feels very like, she's definitely in like an aggressive stance for sure. So this is an interesting one. And I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts on what you think her type is. Like I said, for me, I'm really leaning more towards a three wing two. She hated when Spencer stood up to her. She hated it, which also makes me think that could be very like sexual eight. But I don't know. There's a lot to think about for that one because an eight and health goes to two. So maybe when she's healthy and doing better after the five-year jump, she's more two-like. But she completely loses like the vindictive spirit that she had after the five-year jump. Like it's like nowhere to be found. So that's what's odd. I don't know. I want to know your thoughts. This is like such an interesting conversation to me, but yeah, let me know. And then let's move on to Ezra. And I'm only mentioning the people in the series who were there like throughout the entire time. So if I don't mention like a lot of Emily's um, girlfriends aren't there. Like I'm thinking right now, I'm like, they're there for periods of time, but I don't feel like they, like we saw enough of them to really get like a firm handle on their type. So I don't want to just throw out a type that isn't even accurate, you know? So I'm not going to mention any of her girlfriends, but the boyfriends that are there, like the entire, oh, Caleb. Oh my gosh. That's what I was forgetting. Yes. No, we're definitely talking about Caleb because he's there like the entire time. Okay. So Ezra is an interesting one. I honestly feel like 
there's a lot to him that strikes me as being a four. And part of that is because we find out later in the series that he came from a lot of money and his family, you know, was kind of um, like, um, I'm trying to figure out a word, but like high society kind of vibes. And he left that in order to pursue his own things in life and basically renounced his inheritance, which is crazy. So he obviously cares more about being authentic and true to himself than money, right? That screams four. But part of me is like, is he a five wing four? Is he a four wing five? Because obviously he's very into researching and, and let's just talk about this. Okay. He knew who Arya was when he met her and was able to keep it concealed the entire time and not tell her about the book that he was writing about them and Allison. What a sucker. So there's like this whole thing going on where he's concealing this, got a secret. Can you keep it? And he's also very like in touch with his emotions, but very protective. I don't know. There's like a strong four. So I don't know if he has his core type is a four or if he has a four wing, but either way, five, four, that's what I'm feeling for Ezra. But I'm open to other suggestions. I also feel a little bit like he's a nine. Let me know your thoughts. That's another one that's going to be left up in the air, but I think I've made a strong case for him being a four or five. (laughs) And then since I forgot about Caleb for like two episodes, let's go ahead and just cover him. So Caleb is an interesting one. I feel like he's an eight. Yes. Let me think. Is there any other type? Oh, I was wondering he kind of embraces the loner status very like when we first see him I think we see him in season two two three no it has to be two so I'm like okay him embracing that like is is that him being four-ish maybe but he's also really into tech and like very I think everything that he does is very from the head it's not so much from the heart and I'm almost going to go back on what I just said about Ezra maybe he is I'm you know what? I'm locking in. I'm buzzing in my answer. I think he's a four wing five. So do with that what you will. So yeah, locking my answer four wing five on Ezra. And then yeah, Caleb, he is very five-ish and definitely is like the, the, the like castle five. So the different subtypes of five, one of them is called the castle five. And I think it's a self-preserving five. And he is very worried about like his needs, but he always knows how to get his needs met. So even when he's in the foster care system, he's like, I know what I need to do in order to make sure that I have what I need. So I get very five wing six vibes, but he's also very like embracing his own identity, doing his own thing. He's challenging, like in terms of his conversation style, he's like a challenger. So I think there's a strong case for him being an eight, but then in the five-year jump, he gets together with Spencer which was mind blowing, but it's like two eights together. That's wild. I don't know, but he he's very okay with like being by himself. He doesn't need a lot of money. He doesn't need a certain like job status or status in society. He didn't see like he, he fell in love with Hannah because of their mental connection more than their emotional connection. This is why I'm going back on Ezra as I'm talking through Caleb. This is interesting. Yeah, I think Ezra actually was acting more from the heart. That's what it was. That's what it was. Okay, well, now we're working through it. This is fun. So yeah, Caleb is either a five or an eight. And obviously five and eight have connections to each other. So um, a five in health goes to an eight. And then an eight in stress goes to a five. So it's like, what's going on, you know? And because of his love of coding computers, like technology, that's something that he had in him from so young because we see him doing it like his entire time on the series. And so that takes a lot of mental energy. You have to be very smart in order to do the things that he's doing. It comes naturally. Yeah. There's a case for him being an eight or a five. I think, I don't think he's as reserved as a five but he has the okayness of being by himself that a five has. Does that make sense? So hopefully that's tracking, but I think I'm going to lock in the answer at an eight, like a self-preserving eight. Okay. Then maybe that makes Spencer a social eight. Hmm. This is so fun. I love doing this. Okay. Then let's, oh, and his wing, wait, 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 his wing. I think he's an eight wing nine. And I think Spencer's an eight wing seven. 
just saying. I know these are two separate episodes, so hopefully you've listened to the first one before this one or else you're going to be like, what are you talking about? But anyways, let's move on to Toby. So I think Toby's very steady, stable. He's long suffering. He's just good people. He has like a very gentle spirit. You know what I mean? Not to get like weird about that, but like, I think that he, he's just at peace with life. He feels very nine-ish to me, but it's like, he's also learned, he's also learned to live with his pain and get through it, which feels very for like very self-preserving for. And I talked a lot about the self-preserving for in the last episode. So be sure and check that out. If you're like, what are you talking about? But the self-preserving four is called the sunny four and they don't look too much like the typical four that you think of because they have learned to live with the pain and they kind of have moved on and they want to present a more put together image. Like they're not going to bother you with their pain. And so they're like, I'm just going to get through it myself. So definitely a case for him being a self-preserving four. I also find male fours very interesting because I'm like, they look different than female fours. And I think a lot of times when we mentally think of like a type four, we go straight to a female. And so we're putting like that kind of characteristic onto all fours. And it's like, well, no, that's not the case. So that's an interesting point. Um, Yeah. So it could be a self-preserving four. Now I'm sitting here like rethinking Ezra. I'm like, I don't know what he is. Um, But for Toby, I honestly think that he's a nine because I really do think that he acts from his gut. I think that he, he knows what he needs to do. And I think the interesting part for him that, that I believe really confirms the nine-ness and him being in the gut triad, because obviously nines, eights, and ones are in the gut triad. So we see him with the whole Jenna situation. Don't even get me started. I feel like for him, he was able to get through that because as a nine, he's like, okay, this is a situation I'm dealing with it and I'm not going to let it rob me of my peace and my sanity. And so he's gotten really good at getting through difficult situations and not getting all bent out of shape and like it ruining his life, which again, feels extremely type nine. And if you listen to the previous episode, Emily's a type nine. And I think they both like connected initially because they've been through similar situations where it's just been rough. And they kind of connected on that pain level, but almost like we're not letting it get to us. And so the pain's there, but we're not going to let it define us. Like we're going to keep going with the peace. So I think that's the reason that Toby was able to deal with everything he dealt with throughout the series. And I definitely think that he has a one wing because we see him obviously pursue law enforcement. He cares about upholding the law. He cares about justice and doing things right and uh, being a force for good. So that is my analysis of Toby. But if you have a different type for him, I want to know because I'm curious. And then let's do Mona. Just round things off with my girl. I think she's the most underrated person the entire series. And I will stick to that because man, she is so freaking smart. She's crazy. I think that Mona is a five and I will say she could be an eight, but honestly, I don't think she is like the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm going, yeah, no, she's definitely not an eight. She has very strong eight though. Very strong. And that's why they don't really allude or no, I'm sorry. They don't really say explicitly what her job is in the five-year leap. I'm pretty sure she's a political fixer though. I'm just saying pretty sure she's, um, pretty sure she's like Olivia Pope from, uh, scandal. I'm pretty sure that that's what Mona's doing in DC. And that is like the perfect job for her. Oh my gosh, she would be incredible. She'd be the best PR agent ever. Like, can we just talk about that? Um, Okay, moving on. I think that she's a five because if we look at it, the detail it took for her to be A. So with Mona, everything that she did was so in secret. She felt like she didn't fit in with the crowd. Understandable. I think she probably has, ooh, if she's a five, she definitely has equal four and six wings because she needed the six wing in order to think like 10 steps ahead, but she needed the four wing 
in order to really hit those pain points, you know, like she just was, oh my gosh, she's so good. So yeah, I definitely think Mona is the five and subtype wise, I'm not really sure. Maybe, maybe a sexual five, but there's room for interpretation. You let me know what you think. But for her, the details it took to do everything that she did while she was a, the way she was able to partition her entire personality and be like, I'm Hannah's friend. And then over here, she's like, I hate everybody. (laughs) You know, it's like, there's no way, no other type would be able to be completely different like she was. And obviously like she has mental things going on. There's a lot to digest there, but all in all, fives are very good at like portioning off sections of their emotions and their brain for specific tasks and duties and jobs and family, friends, whatever. And so that's where we got to see that because she also had like her little niches, right? Like she was really into French music. And then we see at the end of the series, she's living in France and she has a real life dollhouse. That was like, whoa, was not expecting that, but so good. And so she has her like little niche subjects that she loves, which is so five. And then she also is like the master planner and she's thinking 10 steps ahead. She is well-versed in a variety of niches. So she's like got the computer and the technology and like the hacking down. She is very culturally aware. Um, She was in, I think she was president of the French club and she has like this obsession with dolls. So she's got like her little interests, which I think is really cool. And then they were able to bring all of that into how she played A, which is diabolical, but also awesome. So I think Mona's a five. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Be sure and follow along on Instagram. We are at dude. I love that podcast. And then you can follow me on Instagram at Hey, it's Liv James and be sure and check back for a new episode soon. Bye.